Okay, so what we're going to do with this one is we're going to create a practical um, memory circuit that can be used in industry, something a little more exciting than just turning on a light. So we're going to start from scratch. I've opened up RS Logix 500. We're going to create a new program. So we go to the new icon. We're using the MicroLogic 1400. So we're going to click that. We're going to hit OK. Um, now we have to go through all of our setup and everything, so we're going to go to our controller properties. You've seen me do this in video two. Um, if, this is your, if you're new to the videos um, and you're just coming in, you may have to want to go back and review what I've done previously, unless you're already familiar with this. So my driver I created is already uh, teacher one. And then I'm going to go to my Who Active. I'm going to grab my um, the PLC that I'm using, which is uh, .11 for the Ethernet IP. We're going to hit OK gotta make sure you hit apply here super important then we're gonna hit okay um, now that we know that our um, that our our drivers are all set up our ethernet drivers are all set up now we want to go to our IO configuration and we want to read IO okay um, click read IO config one more time this will actually come through um, this is saying that we have a different series of uh, MicroLogic 1400 processor, not a big deal. We hit OK, and you can see here that it's put the two cards that are attached to the MicroLogic 1400 PLC on here. So now I know those are out there. I don't have to go through and do it manually, which can be kind of tedious, especially with the Slick 500, because there's so many options. There's so many different cards out there. So we're going to close that out. So now we're going to make a... Um, simple memory circuit that is going to be used to control a cylinder. Now this is a double acting cylinder controlled by a 5-2 solenoid activated spring return directional control valve. And we're going to walk through all the process and why we need it and where we and the different options that we have. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie in our middle start button so that was address I colon zero forward slash 12 for the name we're gonna call this start and this is the middle green push button select OK name pops up then we're gonna put our output now the output for this is an output that we haven't used so far so this is output colon zero forward slash three okay we hit enter. This is solenoid one. Enter. Now, um, what we're going to do here, and then we hit OK, sorry. Now, let's go ahead and download this and see the problem that just having a single start button creates by um, controlling a spring return directional control valve that's controlling a double acting cylinder. So we hit OK. We're going to call this, um, we'll just call it try one, hit save, and then we'll go through this process one more time. It says, hey, you have, uh, we're downloading this series, but you selected this series, so we just hit yes. Um, you want to go, the process in run mode, do you need to put it back in program mode? No problem, hit yes. Hit OK there. You want to go back into run mode? Absolutely. And do you want to go online? Absolutely. You want to monitor what the heck we're doing. So. Now I'm going to come over and hit that middle green button, and you're going to see the solenoid extend. So the cylinder's extending. I hold the push button down until it gets all the way out there, then I let it go. You can see on the screen that my output's activating. There's also a very small LED light that hopefully you can see on the screen that's attached to solenoid 1A. So I activate it again. Now the problem here is pretty obvious. I have to sit here and hold the push button until it gets all the way extended and then I have to release it to let it go. That's a big problem. We don't want to have to pay someone to do that. And we, more importantly, if my finger slips off halfway through, whoop, it slips off, it retracts all the way back, not completing the task that the cylinder is assigned to. So now we're going to take this offline so we can put memory around it. This will uh, avoid us needing to pay someone to just sit there and hold the start button. So I come up here. I'm going to select my rung branch, drag it over just like we did in the parallel video. Select this little corner here so when I push this button, that when I push this icon for the uh, examine of closed instruction, it pops up right where I want it to. Now this is the memory for this output. So what I need to do is select it, grab the black portion, the actual instruction address, drag it down, 
drop it here. Now, this is now memory for that, just like we did with the last uh, basic, very simple uh, memory circuit. Come over here. I'm going to use the stop button again, and that's input colon zero forward slash eight. Hit enter. I'm going to do a name, so I'm going to call this stop uh, middle red. Hit OK. And now I'm ready to download. If you're confused on why I'm using this examine if closed instruction for a stop button go back and watch the previous video there's really two ways to think about it one you can treat it try to understand the idea of an examine if open examine if closed which can be confusing for people who are coming to PLCs from motor controls or what I found a lot of students have success with is they just accept the fact that this is what we do for a while until they become more comfortable with PLCs and then they kind of organically start to understand how and where to use it. Either way is totally fine. Um, so we're going to come over here, we're going to download, go through all the same processes that we went before. Yes, do we want to go back online? Absolutely. So I'm going to walk over to my station and I'm going to activate the green start button and let it go. Now the cylinder's extending. My hand's free, it's not touching the green button, and it extends all the way out. It will stay extended until I come over here and acti activate the stop button, which will disengage the memory. Okay? And it retracts all the way. I can come over here, hit start button again, it extends, my memory latches in, extends all the way, drops out. Now, hit the stop button. Now this is much better than the previous circuit that we had before because I don't have to sit there and hold the button and waste my time. So, um, what we're going to do next is we want to modify this circuit so the cylinder automatically retracts. Okay, This is an extremely powerful tool here and let's go ahead and go offline now, we're going to use LS2 to um, retract the cylinder automatically. LS2 is the limit switch that's located at the end of the cylinder's stroke. Now, LS2 is a normally open switch, but we're going to have it act like a normally closed switch. So, this is going to be our first example of where we use the examinative opened instruction. Now, the examinative open instruction in this case can be used to make a normally open switch act just like a normally closed switch. So um, LS2 is input colon zero forward slash two, I believe. We hit enter. We're going to come over here. We'll label this um, LS2, oops, LS2, end of stroke limit over here hit OK now you'll notice that this is already green here and that's an example when you're offline anytime you use the exam of open instruction it'll always look like this now again what we're doing with this instruction is we're making a normally open switch act like a normally closed switch and this will give us the ability for automatic retraction so this way we don't have to hit the stop button unless we want to now important note here to a PLC, let me ask you a question. To a PLC, is there a difference between the stop button here, the normally closed stop button, and the normally open limit switch? Logically, is there any difference between these two? I want you to think about this as we download and run the program. So we download, click yes, we go through all the same sequence of events that we have. We select yes, we hit OK. So now I want you to notice a couple of things. Both of these are green, meaning that they're logically true. So the path of logical continuity can run through these two. So now I'm going to come over, I'm going to activate the middle green button. And when I do that, when I activate the middle green button, it extends out. And when it hits LS2 at the very end of the stroke, it retracts. That momentary push is enough to drop the memory out and allow the spring of the directional control valve to shift the spool, retracting the cylinder. Let's watch it one more time.
Now, in this circuit, any time I want, I can also stop the cylinder from extending. So I hit the start button, I let it get halfway, and I realize there's a problem. I hit the stop button, and it retracts. And this is an example of where we can use memory to make automation really start to happen. This is really our first step in this idea of automation, where we can make turn something on, leave it alone, and then the process is automated enough to start running itself. Okay, so let's go back to that original question I asked. To a PLC, is there a difference between a normally closed stop button using an examine if closed instruction compared to a normally open push button using an examine if open instruction? Well, to a PLC, there isn't. And the reason there isn't is because all the PLC understands is logic. Is it true or is it false? In this case, the stop button is true when I'm not pushing it because I'm using the examine if closed instruction. I'm using the examine if open here. That means it's examining it, meaning it's true when it is open. Now watch what happens when I deactivate it by my hand. By hand. It turns off there. I have now closed the switch. It is, does not examine or doesn't go true when a switch is closed if you're using the examine if closed instruction. So in this case, is there a difference between my stop button my normally closed stop button and my normally open LS2, in this case to a PLC, no there is not. This is such an important skill for future PLC programmers, troubleshooters, and people who are going to be interacting with any type of PLC program to begin to understand.